Donald Trump is being ordered to keep his mouth shut. Ahead of the hush money trial next week, Judge Juan Mershon says he isn't taking any chances, imposing a gag order on Donald Trump, barring him from talking about witnesses, court staff, or their families, and potential jurors. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Dasha Burns. So, Dasha, what's the reaction been from Donald Trump and his team to yet another gag order? Well, look, the reason that the judge imposed this order is because he actually laid out in that order the history of inflammatory remarks, saying that the defendant has a history of threatening inflammatory and denigrating remarks, uh, writing that the defendant's prior extrajudicial statements establishes a sufficient risk to the administration of justice. There exists no less restrictive means to prevent such risk. And they say that the uh, order is actually pretty narrow. Like, he's a allowed to go after the judge. He's allowed to go after Bragg. He just can't go after witnesses, jurors, uh, and court staff, which, as you remember, he did go after another judge's law clerk recently. Of course, the former president's not happy about this, his team calling this unconstitutional. And the question is, will he actually be able He's to restrain himself? He's it's infringing upon his political speech. Um, uh, MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin joins us as well. Lisa, um, Joshua was just mentioning all the, the past examples of Donald Trump going after staff, going after witnesses, family members, and Judge Juan Mershon clearly doesn't want that to happen here. If he does do it, what might Judge Mershon do in response? Is it They're different for criminal court? It could be. I mean, being held in contempt in a criminal court could be different than being held in contempt in a civil court. So it remains to be seen how far Trump will push Judge Mershon. But, you know, Dasha was noting the examples of people to whom he's done this in the past. He did it three times over the last 48 hours. He spoke after Monday's hearing about Matthew Colangelo, who's a lawyer in the DA's office. He then truth socialed yesterday about both Michael Cohen and about the judge's own daughter, who is, as Dasha noted, not covered by this order, but may have provoked Judge Mershon to enter the order yesterday, as he did. You know, sometimes in this case, we get filings belatedly. This is an order that was signed clearly March 26th. That's yesterday. Something might have happened to have caused Judge Mershon to enter this order exactly Tell now. Tell me a little bit about Judge Mershon. I mean, we know a lot about Judge Ngoron now. Yeah. We knew a lot about Judge Kaplan, how stern mm -hmm. he was. Who's Judge Mershon? Judge Mershon is, an, first of all, I should note, just like any other judge in the New York state system, Juan Mershon is an elected official. And that comes with some baggage that wouldn't be attendant necessarily to people in the federal system. Judges in New York typically come up through a party system. They're identifiable with not only a particular political party, but oftentimes with neighborhood-based political clubs. That having been said, Mershon is definitely more in the mold of a Judge Kaplan than a Judge Ngoron. He is no nonsense. He's precise. He explains to you what he's doing and why he's doing it. And then, after giving you some opportunity to explain yourself, he's done. There was a moment at the hearing on Monday where Todd Blanche wanted to explain further and basically said, you know, it's their burden, Your Honor. And he said, no, 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 it's yours. I was going to ask you how he treated Todd Blanche at the at the hearing on, on, on was it Monday or Tuesday? On Monday, on I Monday. know. It feels like a lifetime it ago. It feels like a lifetime ago. Because I remember the way Judge Kaplan treated um, Alina Haba, and he was very stern with her. I would say this is more cordial, more professional. But again, the lawyers in this case have not pushed Mershon as far as the lawyers in the Carroll cases did. By the time Judge Kaplan was dealing with Alina Haba, he was on his second of two Carroll trials. And there had been a number of shenanigans and sort of mild disobedience of his edicts before we got to that point. Um, all right, let's talk about the other thing that's happening regarding Donald Trump. And this is, I mean, there are a lot of things happening. Here's one of the other things. Uh, this is the, the Truth Social going public. What's the deal with that? How's that going? Yeah, um, well, yesterday was actually a pretty good day for the former president. It surged about 50 percent in the morning, then went went back down a little bit, but still uh, rose about 16 percent by the end of the day. That means Trump now has a stake value at about four point six billion dollars now. The reason people are calling this a meme stock, Katie, is because there is a disconnect between the amount of money the company actually makes yep. and the amount of money is being valued. At. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. So what this means for the people who are investing in this longer term, a big question mark. And there is a lockup period on his shares, which means six months, six right? months. But but the, the people on the board could potentially waive that. And they, of course, are all folks who have been loyal to 
the former president. Or they're passed. related to him. That's right. His Dr. son, Burns. Donald Trump Jr. Lisa yep. Rubin. Ladies, thank you very much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.